Hello everyone. Tayyip Erdogan, the most powerful president in Turkey's history, has led the country for 19 years, including 11 years as prime minister. His position has never been as shaky as it is now on the eve of the 2023 elections. Compared to last year, the inflation rate has hit 80% with food prices doubling and transportation costs rising 123%. The lira has lost 220% of its value against the US dollar. This is the result of opposition to the United States and the government's flawed economic policies. In 1952, Turkey and the US became allies as they both saw the Soviet Union as a threat. They were close like brothers of the same father but different grandfathers. Nearly 40 years after the end of the Cold War, the fundamental factor that formed their relationship was gone as each looked at the world differently. In the US, global power competition is now the top concern. The focus of the administration's strategy is to counter the growing international influence of China and Russia. However, Turkey likes the shift towards a multipolar world order. They maintain security commitments to NATO while also strengthening relations with Russia and China economically and militarily. It is better to befriend a neutral country than be tied to a two-faced ally. US trust in Turkey has declined over the decades. When there is no trust, everything the other does seems nefarious. First, the US believes the future world order will be determined by competition between an alliance of democratic states and large authoritarian states, referring to Russia and China. Therefore, they have acted to strengthen relations with existing allies while committing to restore democracy globally. This has caused a rift with Turkey as President Erdogan, who was once called an autocrat by Joe Biden, has not moved in the same direction as the US. He is often criticized for controlling the media and oppressing dissent. That is why Turkey was not invited to the recent summit for democracy orchestrated by the US. In 2016, Erdogan accused Fethullah Gulen, a US-based exiled cleric, of plotting the coup attempt to overthrow him. Hundreds of military officers were jailed for alleged involvement. After this, US-Turkey relations went downhill as Erdogan requested the Washington government extradite Fethullah Gulen. He was denied as the US felt there was insufficient evidence to press charges. So Turkey had more reason to believe the US was behind the scenes pulling the strings and funding this subversive organization. They began looking at each other with suspicious eyes as tensions continued for the next year. Russia took the opportunity to sell Turkey the S-400 air defense system. This infuriated the US but there was little they could do. In 2012, Turkey wanted to purchase advanced missile defense systems to equip its military to deal with enemies in the Middle East. They asked the US twice to sell the Patriot system but were unsuccessful as Washington would only agree to sell older versions, not the new one. The US, under NATO, deployed this weapon system in Adana supposedly to help Turkey defend against Syria. Two years later, the system was removed because the US felt the threat from Syria had ended. However, Ankara remained worried as the Assad regime was still firmly in power with Russian backing. They were also hit by missile attacks from terrorist groups in 2016. So what did the US do regarding Turkey's concerns? Previously, they had alienated Turkey by supporting the Kurds in Syria against Assad while also opposing Turkey. When asked to purchase the Patriot system a third time, the US would only agree to sell it if the weapons were operated by US military personnel. If the Turkish government needed to use them to destroy enemies, they would have to contact Washington for permission to fire. Paying a lot of money only to wait for production and ask for permission each time they wanted to use it, this is why Turkey refused to buy the US Patriot system. Does this seem like the US was treating its ally badly? No. Turkey is known for being cunning and there is a reason for it. Their condition for buying the Patriot was that the US had to transfer core technologies, meaning they would receive detailed information on manufacturing processes and key components so Turkey could figure out how to make copies and not buy new ones from the US anymore. With such slyness, who would agree? Turkey is a modern country with a sizable arms industry and they would certainly be able to make copies. So why did Russia still transfer S-400 technology to Turkey? Weren't they worried about impacting their own domestic defense industry? In the future, Turkey could produce copies to compete in the arms export market. However, President Putin was willing to sacrifice those economic interests in order to push US-Turkey relations downhill and gain a new friend. Also, the S-400 has existed for over 12 years and Russia has since created the S-500, certainly far superior, 
which will become their main export product going forward. So they weren't overly concerned about Turkey making copies. So why does the US oppose Turkey owning S-400s? The issue is not just that Ankara bought weapons from an enemy but also concerns about information security. Turkey had ordered some F-35 stealth fighters from the US. Once operational, S-400 radar could become a spy providing data to Russia which they could use to improve detection and targeting of the F-35. Therefore, the US demanded Turkey remove S-400s from service. However, they did not listen so the Washington government cancelled the F-35 contract, halted F-16 upgrade plans, and restricted sales of some other weapons to Turkey. Once you hate someone, you see many flaws. In 2018, Halkbank, Turkey's fifth-largest bank, was sued by the US for allegedly violating sanctions on Iran. According to the US Justice Department, Halkbank deliberately played the role of intermediary to illegally transfer $20 billion to Iran. The indictment accused the bank of scheming to defraud the US, violating the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, fraud, and money laundering. If convicted, Halkbank could face fines of around $2 billion. This is not a huge sum but the issue is that those involved included former Minister of Economy Zafer Kaglayan, a close associate of President Erdogan. This raised suspicions and distrust from the US side. Since the Ukraine war began, Turkey has not stood with NATO allies. They identified themselves as a neutral country standing between both sides helping negotiate peace. With the US stance, how could this be acceptable when Turkey was also delaying approval for Finland and Sweden to join NATO? Turkey has this right because one of the terms of the organization is that all existing members must agree on new ones. Turkey sought to delay without specifying a clear timeline for approval. For all these reasons, they currently face mounting difficulties. First, Erdogan's regime is accused of human rights violations so the possibility of joining the EU is becoming ever more distant. Second, the US, UK, and EU have enacted sanctions against Turkey for violating international law of sovereignty. The reason is Turkey conducted drilling activities in the exclusive economic zone of Greece. The sanctions include trade and business restrictions, asset freezing, and travel bans on related organizations and individuals. Third, due to differences with the US and policies diverging from the West, fearing sanctions, many investors have withdrawn from Turkey reducing capital inflows. Combined with the previous COVID pandemic and soaring energy costs from the Ukraine war, as well as flawed government economic policies, Turkey is now facing a severe crisis as described at the start of the video. Compared to last year, the lira has lost 220% against the US dollar. Inflation is nearing 86%. Hundreds of companies are on the verge of bankruptcy. Many factories have closed and hundreds of thousands of workers lost their jobs. Overall, it is very dire. This is the consequence of opposing the US.